This guy, I can't even. It was so disturbing. Good morning friends. I've woken up with the world's most puffy face. Okay, that's, that's an exaggeration. Um, but my eyes are like super puffy as though, as though I've had a reaction. And I don't know what to, so um, I'm just gonna cut out everything <laughs> and stop everything new that I've tried over the last few days. I'm gonna put some ice on my face, take an antihistamine, and just hope that it gets a bit better because I look like I've done five rounds with Tyson. Five. I look like Tyson threatened to hit me and my body reacted accordingly. It's just, it's not great. My slippers are so sticky. Can you hear that? Peel, 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 peel. It's that time of year, which as a child I always found confusing, but as an adult I really like. Um, because I've taken time off work, so I have a few days to just kind of think and process ahead of the new year. Uh, the more I look at my Christmas tree, the more that I want to take it down. Like it's gorgeous, but the season is over. She's very pretty, but I just feel like we're done with that now, you know? And I want to get ready for the new year. I had so many videos that I wanted to film for you guys, but I don't feel good about filming with my face like this she says that she films with her face like this but you know what i mean like good non-vloggy put together videos where i'm sat down chatting to the camera and one of those videos was a skincare routine because <laughs> my skin had been so good that's life telling me not to be too fanciful and just get over myself um anyway gonna make a coffee get some ice on my face look a little bit less swollen it still kind of feels on fire I've taken an antihistamine I've taken some ibuprofen and I'm just hoping that that helps it even looks red you guys I never go red why has this happened it's fine gonna get on with my day I'm not gonna let it hold me back what is the time it's like 6 p.m. I did actually leave the house you guys I went to the Apple store because I had to fix my AirPods my AirPods started doing this thing where the button was jammed and it would turn itself on and off and on and off so I'd be listening to a song and it would randomly stop and I'd have to press play again then it would stop again like the button was just pressing itself you know if you can press the buttons at pause and play and skip can't express to you how annoying it was I truly can't express to you how annoying it was and I use my earpods a lot on the tube and stuff so I use them for like two hours a day oh my goodness you guys as I was walking through Westfield in Stratford this guy I can't even it was so disturbing this man was walking towards me and it was really packed really packed place he had one finger on one nostril and he was like he didn't have his hand here even me when there's no one else in the room I'm putting my hand there to block you from the disgustingness. There was no hand there, he was pressing my nostril and he was 
blowing with full force out of the one nostril, walking down, going, whoo, whoo, spreading his germs everywhere. <laughs> Guys, we need to get it together before the next pandemic because what on earth? I looked and I was like, oh, I almost felt sick. I didn't have a mask on either. I'm going to start wearing a mask again because I didn't think about how full Westfield would be. To be fair, I was only planning to like park, go straight to the Apple store and straight out. But yeah, the women walking like beside me, just behind me were like, oh my gosh, that's disgusting. So at least there was a normal reaction to it. But honestly, I was like, who, were you raised by wolves? Has society failed us? Even if someone was raised by wolves, you get the general consensus of shame, surely. It was disgusting. It was so unhygienic. I have so much I want to do. I want to like plan the new year. I want to do all this jazz. But I feel a little bit stagnant. I think it's because my new year's diary hasn't arrived yet. So I haven't really been able to like look at my calendar and, and write things down. And I think there are certain things that I want to do and want to achieve, but they're going to take like a big commitment. One of those goals, which you might have seen in the video that I uploaded, the day before this one goes live is running 5k and I, I want to or improving my five kilometers time and I want to figure out how to do that but do it really well and so I need to actually sit down and fully plan my life but there's so much I want to do and yeah there's just so much I want to do even with this channel like I want to be uploading more I've been thinking a lot recently about how much I've changed as a person my wants have changed my goals have changed my beliefs have changed which can feel really scary because sometimes it's like you're making decisions in life and you're planning life doing these things but if you're not careful what I'm finding is that I can do things based on a previous version of who I used to be and so there's like a disconnect there and I think I really need to sit down with myself ahead of the new year and just reconnect and recalibrate and not expect myself to have the same goals and wants that 2020 Sarah has because pandemonium really did a number and changed me or just life you know you grow up and you change anywho I say all that to say what am I gonna do I'm gonna drink some water because I'm parched I'm not gonna do headshots today I was gonna do headshots and even though my face swelling did improve with the um ice on my face my skin texture I don't know if it'll show up on video but it just feels like I don't want to say leathery, but it just doesn't feel good. And I know that if I'm doing, you know, if I'm doing some of this, I want it like high quality. I don't want to have to edit my photos much. Um, so yeah, I'm not quite feeling back up to shape. So I think I'll leave that for today. So I've got laundry suit. I also want to do a deep clean of the flat, but it's so much effort. A deep clean is so much effort. And the cleaning company that my sister recommended that I want to use are like fully booked. I don't want to wait. I want it done before New Year's and I could hire a rubbish cleaning company. But as I said, they're rubbish and it was just not a good job. So I'm going to do a deep clean myself. That sounds so bougie. This whole video sounds so bougie. Even stuff like that, you guys, like just accepting that I've changed. And sometimes I do hire a cleaner if I'm too busy with work and I shop at John Lewis and Waitrose. <laughs> and I think when I started this channel, I didn't do those things at all. And those are all good things. And that's not to say, oh, I'm a bajillionaire. No, I think it's just, I'm 29 now. I'm not 23. I, I, <laughs> there are certain things I prioritize and certain things I don't. So it looks like I'm gonna have to do a deep clean of my flat all by myself and the thought of that. <gasps> Oh, makes me feel tired just thinking about it because all the nooks and crannies, I really want to like get in there and dust everything. And we're not going to do that today. What we are going to do is drink water, edit my video, finish my laundry, which I should not have left sat. And then I think we'll be good for today. I've been saying this since forever, but I really need to get like a clothes basket. Because this ain't cute. Like, why am I hunchback of Notre Dame it everywhere, dropping things? It's unnecessary. I hate wearing a bra. <laughs> I find them so uncomfortable, but it just means that I have to like give some temporary support when I when I run for the slipper that I left behind that I probably shouldn't machine wash or tumble dry, but I'm going to anyway.
These ones can't be jumpy tumble dried because I really like them. I'm going to respect that. And I'm going to dry. Oh my goodness, you guys, I didn't film this or tell you guys because I was actually just trying to get it done and any pausing to get the camera out, I think would have just sent me, sent me back into procrastination mode. But I put up this whiteboard, <laughs> I put it up. At first I put it up using command strips, only the bottom two stayed on. But that ended up being ideal because I knew where the top two screws were, but I couldn't find the bottom two. So I've only screwed two holes up here and the bottom two is on command strips, but the command strips feel really sturdy. Um, that's just writing from the video that I filmed for you guys yesterday. But I love it. It feels so much better to do this rather than crouching on the ground like I was doing for about five months. I don't know why I did that. Um, if you don't know why I have a whiteboard, the reason I have a whiteboard is because I love to be able to just get my thoughts out. There is something about physically writing that gives me so much relief of like stress. It's almost as though I've been carrying a load of bags and I can finally put them down. Um, like if you look in my study, you will see that there are so many pieces of paper, so many pieces of paper because I'll have a thought and I just need to get it down on paper so that I don't have to like carry it around. So having a whiteboard for me, just helps so much because it'll give me that relief without like adding to my stress of having a million loose bits of paper lying around the place. <laughs> and also it's in my room, which is really interesting. Well, not even interesting, but might not make any sense because I have strict rules about what I allow in my room. I know it sounds ridiculous, but ever since I had trouble sleeping, um, for a long while, earlier this year, I had really bad insomnia. I had very strict sleep hygiene rules. And part of that is that I don't have electronics in my bedroom. No phones, no laptops. I don't charge my phone here. The only thing electrical that I have is other lights and stuff. Um, <laughs> my ear pods are charging there because since going to fix them today, they said I need to charge them. Anyway. Um, and so I did consider putting this in the study, but this is not really like a work thing. It's more of like a mental offloading. So sometimes I'll be about to go to bed and there's something that is completely stressing me out and I can't sleep. One of my main causes for loss of sleep is stress recently. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just get up, I'll write down a plan of how I'm gonna solve it and I'll go back to bed. If I just think of a plan of how I'm gonna solve it, I still won't be able to sleep because it won't be done. But somehow writing it down just says, okay, you don't have to hold on to this. You don't have to keep it at the forefront of your mind because it's there and you can pick it back up tomorrow on a new day. But yeah, I'm so proud. Oh, I can't remember the name of the person. There was someone who left a comment saying that they had a task to do that they hadn't done. And they said it was like my whiteboard task. Well, baby girl, the whiteboard is up. The whiteboard is up. I hope you're about to do your task before the New Year's. Let's get it done. Team, no more procrastinating. Speaking of which, I did do my laundry yesterday, especially after I had the breakout. I had the breakout, so I was like, I'm just gonna deep clean everything that ever comes into contact with my face. Um, so I did my laundry, did my sheets at like 90 degrees. So I'm gonna redress my bed now. I'll put on a mic, so that way, even though I'm moving around and doing stuff, hopefully you'll still be able to hear me okay. So I'm going to put my laundry away and we can just have a little chitty chat. Is it bad that because I didn't want to wash my beauty blenders so much, what I did instead was I put them through the laundry and they came out really clean and I don't think I will ever hand wash my beauty blenders again. Yeah, I've really just been thinking more about the fact that so much has changed in my life, you know, with my family, with my personal goals, where I live. Um, I live further away from close friends. By going into acting, like I'm still a doctor and I still work as a doctor, but the balance of my life looks so different now. You know, I spend so many of my wake hours pursuing a career in acting and, and trying to improve 
my skills as an actress and apply for jobs and and it's all going well and I really enjoy it but I, I think sometimes there will be a decision that comes up or a conversation that happens and it feels like in that moment I am being expected by other people and to a certain degree myself to respond as a version of myself that probably hasn't existed for a good 10 years <laughs> you know or like a 14 year old version of myself and yeah I don't know if you guys know but like I read and listen to a lot of books a lot of self-help books and, and I'm really so passionate about personal growth I fully believe in our ability to grow and to be better and I believe that that's a god-given ability and a god-given responsibility to look at yourself to reflect to improve I think it's a joy it's what we spend our lives doing you know people are always wanting more and I think that's kind of innate within us it doesn't have to be in a greedy way I think that we can want more because we know that we are capable of more and so on some levels it's actually a desire to fulfill all that God has put inside us and so I read a lot of self-help books, I follow a lot of podcasts and stuff and, and honestly I would say that I think I've grown. Yeah, I've gotten to the point where I think I've actually grown like quite a lot. I think I've I've really tried and I've matured a lot and blah blah blah. But what that has come with as well is is a slight change in in beliefs. It's come with as well really really firm boundaries like obscenely firm boundaries <laughs> in some areas in other areas I still need to work on my boundaries a lot but for some areas I will absolutely be fine doing what I want to do um but yeah, I think that poses a challenge right because things don't always grow and change in unison um so you can feel like you've grown and changed but you're still trying to fit into old boots and there's that transition period of being shoeless <laughs> or in your new boots and I don't know if I'm making any sense whatsoever but yeah I guess that's what I've been thinking about a lot um and going into 2023 you know I'm gonna do my usual reflect and plan for the new years if you want me to film a video on that let me know by the way because I do love doing stuff like that and I do it every year I think it's again I'm really big on self-improvement so new year new me new and improved me um which I know people hate that saying but oh, people just sometimes I feel like people love to hate something just for the sake of it and if you're one of those people who hates new year new me that's fine but I don't know or I think that we sometimes dislike things because it doesn't go well for us so we decide the whole thing must be trash and we throw out the baby and the bath water like no nothing's perfect but I find a lot of benefit in a new year's reflection and reset you know, I think some traditions are traditions for a reason. It's because they're actually really helpful. That said, going into the new year, I do feel like a lot of what I want to do and accomplish is just more fearlessness in putting into practice the things I've already learnt and more discipline in putting into practice the things that I've already learnt. Less fear of what people think. Um really kind of backing myself to go for things I do feel like in a lot of areas of my life I still really doubt myself even though on this channel I might come across as confident and I've got it all together you know going from being a doctor to being an actor is a huge jump which leaves you feeling vulnerable in both fields you know and in one you're the acting or trying to act medic and in the other you're the new actress and and so yeah that that has been challenging it's been fun and I have no regrets no regrets whatsoever I personally believe that we a lot of people are living on a mindset of the 1930s they they really think that the life expectancy we have now is the same as 1930s so they're in a rush so when they hear that someone's 29 like so many people keep saying to me oh my gosh you look great for 29 and while I appreciate it, your girl loves a compliment. I love a compliment so much. I'm like, what do you mean? I'm only 29. <laughs> like, I genuinely am like, I'm still super young. And um, so for me, changing careers or adding a career age 29 is not a big deal at all. Like, I'm still very young. I, I still feel mentally very, very, I feel more mature mentally. But like, I've just been, I just started being an adult. 
Like I just graduated like six years ago. Like give a baby time. I have no issue with changing careers. I love it. And if I were to change my mind again at 45, I really wouldn't mind that either. My personal opinion after, you know, working in medicine and seeing many lives come to an end is that you really do have to just, oh, sounds so cheesy, but make every moment count and live your life right now. Like don't live for someone else's playbook. And something I find funny as well is that people will give you advice on something that they've never done and have no expertise in. People will literally tell you what to do in life when they've never been you. They've actually never done it. Like someone might say, say if I was asking someone, oh, should I go into acting school? And they're like, mm, probably not, you know, most people start as a child actual. They said something, say if they, this didn't happen. <laughs> I'm very careful about who I ask for advice. Um, but say if they were giving me all these reasons and then when you take a step back and you think about it, is that person someone who has been a doctor and an actor or done whatever you are trying to do? Number one, ask yourself that. Did they succeed at it? If the answer to those things are no, then why are you asking their advice on it? And like, don't get me wrong, I think you should respect your elders. I think we should, you know, have respect for each other. And obviously there's wisdom in a multitude of counsellors. But I also think, you know, sometimes people can project their own failures and fears onto you. <laughs> so you might be there living your best life, loving life, doing your thing. And then if you ask them for advice, they'll give you all this advice that comes from a place of fear um, that has been built up from the stories they've told themselves to help themselves deal with the fact that they were too afraid to go for it or they failed or whatever it is, you know, completely normal things. And I say this about them, I mean this about myself too. You know, if I ever were to give any of you negative, you can't do it advice, just remember that. Like, should you really be taking my advice on that subject? And I, I mean that with, with a passion. Even if someone gave you all the advice, yeah, all of the best advice, unless it's literally God, unless they are literally sent from God, they don't know. They've never been you. They've never been in your shoes. So even if as an actor, I'm asking someone else something, sometimes it just doesn't apply because they don't do the same roles that I do, or they don't apply for the same roles that I do, or they don't look like me. They're not in my shoes. And so while it's great to learn from, the decision is ultimately mine. And I think realizing that and meditating on the fact that I am the person who is in the best position to prayerfully make the decisions that are needed to be made in my life. Realizing that, accepting that, and having the humility to take on that role has been so empowering. Realizing that actually God gave me the steering wheel for my life for a reason. He didn't give me the steering wheel for someone else's life, you know? I'm not out here making decisions for your life because I wouldn't be qualified. I have no idea what you've been through. I don't know who you are. I don't know how you feel. I don't know those things. Even if I was your best friend of 15 years, I still wouldn't know everything about you. Um, and so, yeah, I, I find that it can be both scary and empowering, depending on how you look at it, to be honest. Um, but I'm choosing to see it as empowering, that I am empowered to choose and I'm in the best position to choose. I can pray about things and ask God and God will lead me. I'm a Christian, you probably already know that. Um, and God gives me that power to choose and he gave it to me for a reason. You know, he didn't put someone else in the steering wheel of my life. He put me here because he must have faith that I can do a good job or he must want me to just have a go. And so, yeah, I don't know. Let me know what you think of that in the comments. Um, I'm being really slow with this. I need to go and get some hangers. So I'm going to just put the clothes away and then I'll pop the camera back on when I've hopefully gotten a little bit further. <laughs> <gasps> okay, I think that'll do for now. Um, 
my room is pretty much kind of tidy. I do still have some cushion covers to wash. They're going through the laundry machine. And then I'll put them on when they're done. But my pillows are done, so... I use the same sheets all the time. I probably should get some new ones, but I just love them. They're like this flowery pattern. I don't know if you can see it. Um, and then my silk, or satin rather, satin sheets. I keep these at the back because the, these are the ones I actually sleep on. So these go at the back because they're less decorative than the decorative ones in front. And then depending on how I'm lying, I'll just surround myself with the others. I have this thing where um, I love sleeping diagonally and yeah I just love sleeping <laughs> to be completely honest I'll probably do a deep clean in some kind of like flat tour when I do but until then I think I'm probably just gonna end this video here sorry that it's been so random um just a random day to be honest it suits the time of year it's that weird clump 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 it's like a clump of days between Christmas and New Year's. And that has been just summed up today. Um, but yeah, it's been a good day. It's been a bit non-stop, quite busy. Thank you for watching. I will see you in my next video, hopefully with a slightly less puffy and weird looking face. <laughs> Love you so much. Bye. Also, please forgive the mess in my room. I'm kind of saving everything until the New Year's, so. Including tidying. <laughs> okay, bye.